This is Real Life Conversation with the voice of the North. This is Night Owls with Alan Robson. Call 0191 488 3188. Greatest Hits Radio. Alan Robson with you and a message in from Mark. Now, you might remember Mark was wondering what his uh, what he was entitled to living in a flat with Asperger's. Well, just had this update from him. He says, I'm now settled in with my new flat apartment, listening to the night owls with a cuppa and biscuits. Oh, spoiled. Just wanted to say thanks to you and the guy who came on a few weeks ago explaining what I needed to do. How easy is it living these days, especially if you have a disability of any kind, when they're forever tweaking, forever testing you, or oh, you're going to have to come back in and prove for the third time that you're poorly? It just seems like a, a constant irritation and an absolute pain along with that. So give me a call, 01914. Double eight three one double eight, or you can text Alan A L A N plus your message to six ten fifty four six ten fifty four, okay six one zero five four six ten fifty four, and uh, let's get busy. Whatever you want to talk about, if there's a topic that you would like us to raise, we were quite happy to do that too. Pick up your phone and let's get cracking on that. We have Raymond from Jarrow. Who is with me? And let's see what he's talking about. Hi, Raymond. Hi, Alan. How are you? I'm very well, mate. Thank you kindly. What can we do for yeah. you tonight? Um, if it's okay, if I could speak about um, a problem that's in Gerald. Yeah. It's uh, St. Clair's Hospice. Right. Uh-huh. Um, it's been shut down due to mismanagement over the years. Right. Um, and where it has, it's been mentioned in Parliament also. Uh-huh. There's a big uh, thing going on at the moment, and it's on Facebook. It's called Save St. Clair's Hospice. Uh-huh. At the moment, they have thousands, somewhere like 12,500 people on it at the moment. So just to mention the people, if they can just look it up, save St. Clair's Hospice, sure. and just type it in their Facebook and they'll go to it, you know. Absolutely. And they're trying to save it at the moment. It would, to be honest, with without luck, like, you know, things aren't going as well, like, you know. Um, what I have been told is that the patients that would have been in St. Clair's have been going to South Tyneside Hospital. And, again, I can only tell you what I've been told is right. that when they've been there, there's patients, like elderly patients, have been going in who have had dementia, just walking in on them, you know, and things like that. Right. They need, they need to reopen it and get these people back in, you know. My dad was there, you know. Um, right. I mean, he passed along way a long time ago. Uh-huh. But um, the place has been absolutely fantastic. It needs reopened, and uh, obviously the government putting money into it, you know. Sure. It's it's scary. I mean, it shut down in January, didn't it, though? It's, you're right, it yeah. did. Yeah. It, but as I say, people, you're talking probably for the full of Jarrow is yeah. fighting for it, you know? Yeah, no, I know. it's not yeah. just for Jarrow, it's for Heaven and other places, South Shields, the same patients there, you know? And also, um, I mean, I know you, you say uh, any patient that would have gone there, and mm-hmm. I, I mean, in its time, it's had probably about four or 5,000 families looked yeah, after, in, including definitely, yours, yeah. including mm-hmm. yours. And that's, mm-hmm. uh, I'm a great believer in the, the hospice idea. And you mm-hmm. say, well, but, well, you can go to hospital and say, it isn't the same. It's no. not remotely the same. No. The thing is, Alan, I put them in the hospital and it's probably going to cost more to put them into a hospital mm. than in the hospital because a lot of people in the hospice give their, like, their time free, you know. As well, I know there's paid people there, but there's also a lot of people giving time free, you know. Sure, of course, volunteers. And, and this is what the crazy thing about it is, you know. Um, and to be honest, my councillors, well, the councillors in general are a waste of time. I mean, apart from the independents, the independent councillors are absolutely brilliant. They've been fighting it for all the way. Never heard anything with Labour, you know. Um, same as the MPs. The MP mentioned it well after its time when it was shutting. Yeah, yeah. It's just absolutely crazy. Yeah, it's too. We don't want it's too late to do anything about it by yeah, this. But that, that, that yeah. sounded like it was the plan. Let's wait yeah. until it's too late and we can't do anything with it, and then we don't mm. have to fight for it. I mean, yeah. I, I remember when the first um, broadcast or they they put like a thing out to the press, and I remember reading it. In, in it, it mm-hmm. I can't remember the precise wordings, but it was like they were in. They'd been in financial difficulties for years. Mm. And then they had to close because of lack of funds. They had to close for a, a period in last year, I think it was. 
And right, yeah. when they tried to come, to make a comeback on the back of it, they didn't have enough money to keep it going. Mm. I understand it's an expensive thing, but it's, mm. this is human lives you're talking about here. Yeah, exactly, Alan. When my dad was, I tell you what, when my dad was there, he was looked after, put it this way, he was only given it a week to live. And he lived an extra few months after being there. They had to send him away because they couldn't look after him anymore because he, right. so, he, was, he was getting better. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, you, but how lovely is that? I mean, I, I've done a, a little bit of work and I've spent a, f a fair bit of time in places like St Oswald's Hospice over the water. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first thing I was taught when you go into a place like that, it's not a place to die, it's a place mm -hmm. to live and you enjoy okay. your life so much that... Things like what happened to your dad can happen, you know. There, and, and, and you know what it is, Alan. When I was, sorry for interrupting. Sorry. All I remember is when, when I visited him there, they would say to us, "I say whatever you want, give him." So we'd be taking Newcastle <laughs> brownie and really in front of you know, and he would be sitting in the fridge eating his Newcastle brownie. And I'm thinking to myself, where would you get that in a hospital? You wouldn't, you know. This is absolutely perfect. With the gardens, were beautiful, everything. Yeah. Yeah. And they just shut it down. There's no need for it, you know. Didn't have a shop as well. I'm fairly sure that it Sinclair's had a shop. I can't remember, Alan. It was a long time ago. It was 10 right. years ago, so I don't ah, right, remember. Right, right. I'm fairly yeah. sure they had a shop somewhere as well, so mm -hmm. I presume that's that leg onto the wall as well. And it's mm -hmm. just, if you look at... First of all, you've got a building that's built for a, for one reason. Yeah. It's not, yeah. it's yeah. not, not built to be flats or any... No. It's built to be a hospice. It's got mm -hmm. a lot of kit in there that... I wouldn't like to think how much mm -hmm. money it would cost for you to replace. Surely there's the something that surely yeah. there's something that can be done, though. I mean, when you're talking to MPs and stuff, I don't know whether you, the group's done that. I mean, what are they saying? Uh, well, well, I'm a supporter, so I'm, right. not, I'm not a person that's running it, so I don't know what, exactly what's going on in the background. I can only see what goes on in Facebook and what the family see, you know? Sure. So um, that's why I mentioned the, the, the name of the Facebook page. It's Save... St. Clair's Hospice. Right, um, as right. I say, at the moment, within a short time, they've got something like 12,500 people in it already, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. me, to be honest, the council, the Labour councillors want to be scared. And the Labour MPs want to be scared because they got, obviously, of Jarrow, because they've got to remember these, these people vote them in, you know. Mm. I mean, independence mm. has been absolutely fantastic. I mean, you know, I couldn't, just, the yeah. councillors, the independent councillors have been absolutely brilliant. Couldn't fault them, Alan. Right. Well, this is uh, this this is one of them. I'm not playing politics with who's best no, no, and who's no, not no, best. No, yeah. People people will ex get their own experience of somebody and make yeah. their own minds up. And uh, it sounds like yeah. you have. But on the back end of this, you just need as many people working in its direction. It just yeah. sounds though like the <laughs> the government in particular. Uh, they'll have seen this. They'll know about it. They've got. As you know, yeah. M MPs in the patch, so uh, they'll know that it's happened. Why haven't they just stepped in and, and taken it on? Because the difference, mm -hmm. the difference between hospitals and, and hospices, mm -hmm. it, it's it's one's bread and, and, and one's a pasty. You know, there's, there's you kind of compare the two. You, you know what the problem is, don't you, Alan? Because it's this Brexit that all the Brexit <laughs> took over everything that goes on in the country. Uh, full stop. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. so that's the problem at the moment. You know. But there's the sad thing about it. There's a place like this where we really do need. It's just going to go, you know, and it's a sad thing because when that's gone, what happens next, you know? Yeah, well, and what we heard very early doors was that apparently Europe, whether you're, whether you're for it or against it, doesn't make yeah. any difference. Apparently, uh, a lot of U European funding, money that we yeah. get back, yeah. goes into charities and... Uh, Hospices and specialist yeah. groups for people with cancer, yeah. or you know, yeah, all of these, all of these health uh, groups. So, question uh, oh, is, sorry. if if you're going to have, if you're going to have Brexit, and mm -hmm. it seems that well, we are, or we might, well, we still don't know, because <laughs> that's still where we are. Um, <laughs> if, yeah. if you're going to have it, though, have something mm -hmm. to replace it in the lives exactly. of all of these people who need them. You kind of just say, well, yeah, we're going to, these people are dying, but. Uh, let's close the place that they were expected to go into. Uh, you kind of yeah. just do that. Well, it's. Yeah. Could you imagine yeah. saying to somebody who's, you know, on, literally on the doorstep of making mm -hmm. the big step, and mm -hmm. uh, and you say to them, Ah, well, you were going in, we're going to stick you in a hospital ward now till you go. Yeah. And that's just how, it, instead of yeah. having.
people around you that lift your spirits and yet you're doing something different every day. We, we need hospices badly, and I, I'm gutted that, Sinc- that this is happening yeah. to Sinclair. It's absolutely gutted. In, in this place, I don't know if you've ever, ever visited Alan, but it was a fantastic place. Yeah. The gardens were beautiful, the place, the, the people were fantastic, the nurses, the doctors. You just couldn't fault them one little bit. But the best absolutely thing about fantastic. it is they don't treat anybody like it's the end of the game. They, they just treat them normal and let you get on with things. And are you going out today? Oh, where have you been? And oh, it's just and normal. You know what is, when, when my dad went in, I was more nervous than him. <laughs> and when I went in, <laughs> his mother, when I went in, they were going, if he wants any beer, just bring it in. If he likes whiskey, bring it in. I'm going, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we brought him his brownies in, and he had his own little place in the fridge where his brownie, and he just go and help himself. Great. It was absolutely fantastic, you know? That is great. He just couldn't follow, you know? <laughs> and, and it's so sad to see somewhere like that go, you know. You imagine and, and that? Say, Can you imagine yeah. that in a, in a hospital? Hang on, where, nah. am, I, where am I going to put me crates? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be it's right. Not happen, Alan. No. Definitely not. Alan, could, if I could talk to you about something else. Oh, you know, I just thought about Brexit, yeah. Sure. The last time I phoned you, I was a little bit intoxicated. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> it happens. I'm not the night because I'll work tomorrow. All right. <laughs> okay, so what, what's the crack anyway? Um, it's about Brexit itself, like about this uh, Boris Johnson deal, like, you know. Uh-huh. What, um, do you th- what do you think? Are you for it? Are you against well, it? Well, well, to be honest, I've, I've got a, a European partner, you know. Right. Um, I voted to stay, right? Well, right. I didn't actually. I voted. I took both. I don't really remember. I took both boxes. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> because oh. I couldn't believe either side. Right, right. But that's where exactly where I was. I I, like, I love the idea of us being a, a, we're an incredible country and we're totally independent. Then on the other hand, I love Europe. So that, that what is that? Mm-hmm. What do you do then? <laughs> well, when I go over to Europe and I visit the oh, what else is their family? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, they always ask, and I say, you know, it's got nothing to do with Europeans. But in my case, you know, I mean, yeah. what I say to them, I say it's nothing to do with Europeans. But the problem that we have is a lot of people have voted on. Immigration, things sure. like that, they did. Yeah, and that, they'll be lying if they didn't. No, of course. Sure. Um, and they did. And that, but, uh, what I try to tell them is that the problem that is is that our government, uh, what they did, they didn't invest enough in the hospitals and schools. Mm. So they start to make people think, well, hang on, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. They're blaming the immigration, aren't they? Mm. That's where it comes down to, you know? Yeah, but then have you noticed that as soon as you can't get doctors and nurses from Europe yeah. like we normally do... Uh, and the weird thing is people are saying, but a lot of the doctors that come in, they're from outside of Europe, you know, like India and Bangladesh. Yeah. And, well, that's true, but they usually learn how to, to work in a European fashion in Germany or Spain or France or before they get yeah. anywhere near Britain, you know, they're, mm-hmm. so they already know what they're kind of what they're doing. But uh, so we, they're not coming to Britain because they've heard, well, we're pointless going there, we're going to get kicked out, so mm-hmm. let's let's not bother with it. So now... The health service is in a mess because yeah, they they won't take the 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 risk on coming over you. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the answer is, but the uh, what I think of Boris's scheme is it's 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 almost ninety eight percent Theresa May's the one that she got mm-hmm. shot with it poo is. over, uh, and a little tweak on Ireland that I don't believe for a second the Irish will go along with. But <laughs> uh, so <laughs> where, where does that leave everybody? <laughs> But what do we do, Alan? Yeah. You know what I mean? As I said to you before, I wasn't sure before, but what do we do? It's three and a half years on. You get, I you, think it's just time to move on, isn't it? You get swept. Uh, the, what you said was exactly right, and it's, it, it doesn't matter whether you're for or whether you're against. Yeah. Brexit's yeah. made the government and everybody attached to it take their eye off the British ball as to what mm-hmm. needs to be done in Britain. Things like St. Clair's Hospice closing yeah. down is a national scandal. It's, it shouldn't yeah. be a regional anything. It's a no, national that's, scandal. That's disgusting, yeah. And they should, they should, but, have, they should look after Britain. For, mm-hmm. You're pointless saying, well, Britain, we're going to be this brilliant thing when we're making a mm-hmm. complete pig's ear by not concentrating on what we need to concentrate on. Exactly. And, and do you know what it is, Alan? It would be great if... I mean, do you know what it is? I mean, I've not mentioned it, obviously. I'm just, I say I'm just a supporter. Mm. But it would be brilliant if everybody just put some money into it mm. and build a fund up where we could put money in. The government, look great. they put money into it. Mm. You know what I mean? Just to, just to keep it going, you know? It's just, if you think about it, the, the problem that they had was they need something sensational. I mean, we're not talking like give them two or three quid and we'll keep them on the... Oh, I give them a fifty pound note. That'll see them until Thursday. It's not like that. They they need millions to yeah to get it going. And 
you, uh-huh. you need you need one or two things realistically for this to work. You need uh-huh. a complete U-turn by the government. Can mm-hmm. can I see that coming? Because they're not even thinking about the people at the moment. Mm-hmm. They're, they're too busy bouncing back and forth from Brussels. Yeah. Uh, so I can't see that happening. Or you need, and, and I know this is something that's heinous to a lot of people, or you need a private company coming in there saying, we're going to run it as a business. Yeah, and they could advertise, even if they do it, they advertise on it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's just, if you think about it, care homes have mm-hmm. made millions of pounds for, for the yeah. people that have bought them and opened them and, and let them go. And you you could name half a dozen names of ordinary people who made the whole care home thing work. Because let's face mm-hmm. it, they're not cheap. And no. uh, here is the the hospice. Surely mm-hmm. somebody could make a go of a of a like building that, yeah. a building like that. And I think it's, it's your best hope. Yeah. Just because just because yeah. I don't trust politicians at any level. I don't, I don't care yeah, who they are. Agree. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hey, I but agree, anyway, yeah. lo- lovely to hear from you. Keep us posted you, with this, Raymond, if you will. Uh, yeah. Keep me posted. Could, if, if could, I just, could, could I just mention it again? The, the, the Do website it. so they can yeah, save St. Clair's Hospice, and that's it. Just type it in uh, Facebook and they'll get it. It's in general. They're going to go wrong. Good man. Thanks Great. a lot, Ray. Cheers, mate. Great. Bye now. All the best. Bye bye. And also, this is coming. Please, can you wish Flurry in Lobley Hill a very happy 82nd birthday? Lots of love from Victoria, Warren, Olivia, and Ava. Ava? Ava. <laughs> and she makes the best Sunday dinners ever. Oh, hey, don't tell Gina that. She'll be knocking. And also, house parties. Alan, this is from Liz in South Shields. She says, I was at a house party when I was about 15. My fr- That's the killer age to have them, isn't it? My friend's parents were away on holiday, and we invited quite a few people. Some older people turned up. One man went upstairs and threw himself through the single glazed bathroom window. There was glass everywhere. People were screaming. He got up and walked away without a scratch. But we had to clear up and get a new window fitted before my parents returned. Two days later, we managed to have a whip round, got a new window, fitted, then waited with bated breath. When the parents came back, and it seemed... Like we'd got away with it. The house was immaculate. That is, until the mum came down the stairs and was furious, asking, why has the bathroom window been replaced? Now, the thing was, the new window handle opened the other side, the other way. (laughs) Duh. Suffice to say, I left as soon as I could, and my friend was grounded. I didn't go back round there for ages. Liz <laughs> she was, yeah, when you you go to push the window out, but it opens inwards and you go, whoa, hang on a second. <laughs> There's someone up here. Oh, I had a I had two next door neighbours who were uh living two ladies living together. It was their life choice. However, when I was a kid, I just thought there because they were aunties. Anybody that wasn't family became an auntie, didn't they? The next door neighbours were Auntie Betty and Auntie Betty. The two Bettys. And uh, I didn't know there were a couple till literally about f- five years ago. Yet they lived beside us all the time. They, they were grasses for, for parents. When they, I did that 15-year-old party thing. And as soon as my parents came back, it was on Monday he did this, on Tuesday he did that, on Wednesday. Oh, so don't think you can trust your neighbours. Not if you live on a terrace, you snooker. However, I've been looking forward to this. Deborah is with us, and Deborah is in Durham. Hello, Deborah. Hello, Alan. Good I, evening. I'm I'm in one way intrigued. <laughs> in another way, I've just made a big mistake because I've typed what you're on about into my <laughs> computer. Uh-huh. You really don't want to see what came uh, under the screen. <laughs> you, you re- this was, this was not a good idea. So first of all, we're talking about stuff that you brought back from other places when you went on holiday. Where did you go? Well, it wasn't actually me who went on the holiday. It was uh, my sister-in-law, right? And um, I think it was Thailand that they'd been to, <laughs> right? And um, they brought us like the usual little knickknacks back, like uh, some of those little worry dolls. Um, right, yeah. They bought us 
some alcohol, um, but we didn't dare drink it because it looked like it was muddy water. It looked like they <laughs> collected it out of a puddle right. or something. Right. Um, but one of the other presents um, was actually a tin of tuna, um, but the tuna was called Fanny. <laughs> right. Now, I, I could imagine. Did you know? Could you, right. So how did you know it was tuna? Well, it's, um, it has a little picture of fish on the front. So. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, I'm sinking already here. This is good. Uh, um, right, so it, but it could have been a, could have been fish then. I mean, a, a different kind of fish. could have been a, a, um, a cod. I think somewhere on the tin it does have it on, um, saying that it's tuna, but, um, yeah. but yeah. Did did did, did the <laughs> any, <laughs> anything I say is going to be misinterpreted? Now, now we know. <laughs> we know it's a can of fanny, right? We know. Get <laughs> people at home. Get past that. It's a can of fanny. Did uh, when you were going through customs, were you not worried that they'd see you, fanny? <laughs> I mean, when you, when she oh, there it is. I've been sent a picture. That's you. Thank you very much. You've sent a picture of it. Well, I actually uh, sent a picture. Um, I put a picture on Facebook. Got I should it. have wrote here's a picture of my fanny. It is. It's it's <laughs> fi figwa fanny atun, which is tuna in an anagram. So I, I, I would presume it is tuna. Uh huh. Um, and you would you would go looking at the shelf and say, I've eaten <laughs> some strange things in my life. <laughs> the weird thing is that when you go abroad, a lot of the words that we might have for other things. Uh -huh. well, that means we don't have to go there and talk about the other things. Uh, you would look on the shelf and you'd get a bit of a shock. Yeah. And then you'd realise it, it's normal in in that part of the world. That's well, just, exactly, just what... Well, exactly, yeah. It's like, but... this is... The, whether you like it or not, that's the equivalent of John West right there, I suppose. <laughs> it is, yeah. I suppose, I suppose it's that. That's Because uh, the thing that I... In Jamaica, uh, there was something... One's clean and one's kind of down the same route. Uh, I went to a, uh, a, it was a do, and you had to bring your own, whatever you wanted to drink, because they didn't have a license for drinky things. So uh -huh. it was like a singy show, but you had to bring, you had to bring some cans or whatever you wanted to drink. Now, I don't drink alcohol, so I went to the local store and I bought some cans, and the fizzy drink was called Ting. Ting. <laughs> Ding. A oh, ding. T T T I N G. Oh right, yeah. Ding. Um, <laughs> and it's it's really nice. It's kind of lilt. Uh -huh. it, it's Jamaican lilt. Is the, probably the nearest thing I would say to it because they didn't have any coke or any tins of anything I'd ever heard of. So you, what is that? Oh, it's kind of a lemonade. Well, I'm some of that. And halfway through the show, a guy came across. And he said, "I want your ding." <laughs> Which is, uh, he didn't get me ting. Um, I gave I gave him a can of drink, but he didn't get me ting. And, no. and the other thing across there is is we gave a holiday to a, a, a night owl listener to go to Jamaica, and when he came back, he sent me a picture, and in his case, he'd bought cock soup. Which, soup, which yeah. is chicken soup, just just chicken soup. It's like, is it in the packet? It's a, yeah, it's like, um, no soups do that kind of thing. Yeah, right? you can get it in Tesco and stuff. Oh, there you go. You see, yeah, <laughs> fantastic. So, it, knowing the devilish sense of humour that most of us have got, I would imagine anybody that saw that what you bought or what what was bought for you rather by your sissy, everybody would bring one of them home. Oh yeah, everybody. Definitely. They'd be on the net, and they'd be, they'd be uh, using it for for every daft cheap laugh you can get, like as we have. So, yeah. so there you well, go. I haven't ate the funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, because then you'd just be left with an empty tin. I, yeah. I understand. No, you have to keep. You have to keep. Mind you, I, in, in some some people would suggest I wouldn't risk it if I were you, because we don't know what part of the fish it is that's actually. In there from the tuna, but uh, you presume it's it's lovely flaky sandwich food, but uh, but there you go. <laughs> oh, apparently, oh, hang on, I'm getting a message about my ting. Pink ting is even nicer. It's grapefruit. I don't know. Fizzy ting. Oh, right. 
learning. There you go. So we're living and learning. <laughs> um, we we enter into the free daft stuff that's come back. Can you beat Deborah's can of tuna? Lovely. <laughs> Thank you very much, Deb. It's lovely talking to you. Thanks, Thanks for coming Alan. on. Bye-bye. Take care. How Bye. about that? She's fantastic. We love it. We love the fact because that's that's kind of northeastern sense of humour and sensibilities. It's it's Great Britain. We go there. Oh, I think that's disgusting. Let's buy some so we can complain about it. Amazing. What kind of... Oh, hang on. Apparently, Atun, says Anne. You see, we're living and learning every step of the way. Atun is tuna in Portuguese. So how about that? And yet that was found in Thailand. So there you go. Atun is tuna because it's just rearranging the words. Um, I'm thinking, what else? Uh, Nuta. It'll be called Nuta somewhere else because they're just jumbling it up now. Uh, and I always thought we had to be careful with tuna because it led to um, dolphins getting trapped in nets and stuff. Do you remember when there was a lot of stuff like that? Anyway, pick up your telephone. We want to talk about all kinds, but especially with you. So if you've never called before, holiday gifts and stuff, we want some more of them. And have you ever had a tin of it? <laughs> Or some soup. There you go. 0191 4 388 We're back after a fabulous uh, piece of music that will be immediately following this. Mega BG song. Take that. And Mark talking about his northern relatives and his little hidden beach. Let's see him. So let's crack on. Now, incidentally, Sarah has sent me a picture uh, of Grace... Is the name of the company. Quality since 1922. Cock flavour noodle soup mix. A Caribbean favourite. It absolutely is. Send the photograph. Now, I have no qualms with this. To me, this is its not rude. It is merely a state of your mind. Uh, kind of like the fanny before. And photographed two days ago in Sainsbury's. She says, keep up the good work, Alan. You make me laugh, says Sarah. Now, you say I have no qualms. But I know exactly what you like. Because let's face it, if Sainsbury's sold Fanny, you'd have another picture of that, wouldn't you? Because you just would. It is in our nature. So there you go. We have <laughs> we have products of, uh, well, of a, a, a slightly different nature. And let's talk about more because uh, we got Michael next. He's in High Wickham. And he's on about all kinds of things. Let's find out. Just before we do that, though, I want to set you a challenge tonight. I'm going to give you four clues to four words, or five words in total. You've got to work out what the five words are and then tell me the name of the album and the artist who performed them because all five words... Or on, a, on the same album, you're going to tell me the name of the album. It's Greatest Hits Radio, if I'm saying. You're going to give us the name of the Greatest Hit album, the Greatest Hit band, and uh, do not ring in, do not enter, until you have all four answers. Okay, you might work out what the overall answer is, but don't, until, don't ring in until you hear all four clues, if you would be so kind. The first one is this. A blackbird is one. A thrush is one, and so is a nightingale, okay? A blackbird is one, apparently a thrush is two, so is a nightingale. That's your first clue. Three more clues to come, and Michael's with us in High Wickham. Hi, Michael. Hi, Alan. Hello, Hello mate. How are you? I'm very well, mate. What can we do for you? Um, just one thing about uh, bringing back presents from abroad. Oh, right, uh-huh. I went for the first time abroad in 1976. Right. For my sister's sixth birthday with my parents. Brilliant. Where'd you go? Um, we went to Lorette del Mar. Oh, very nice in Spain. Lovely. Well, judging on my sister's um, reaction when she went this year, it's changed a bit. Absolutely. Yes, it's a bit more magaluf than than, uh, than it used to be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, anyway, I was six year old going there for a birthday. Right. So we came back with. One of the huge donkeys and a huge sombrero. Brilliant. I, I mentioned those donkeys, and it was just back in that day, 
going anywhere as far as Spain was like the end of the world. I mean, wow, it's the furthest that I'd ever been, furthest that most people I knew had ever been, and you had to bring a donkey back, and the plane was... You couldn't get you couldn't get down the aisle for two weeks. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, secondly, I <laughs> talked to you about Alex Glasgow before. Yes. And one of the songs he wrote in the seventies was um, is well, it's not linked with Brexit because he was before well Brexit. before sure. all of us. Yeah, yeah. But it, it was. Um, about doctors and nurses in hospitals and um, uh, basically I can only quote one line which is um, the doctor didn't come because they said you n-word go home oh blame me right Oof, that's, that that's heavyweight not. It I, is for back then, you, especially. But wow! If if you look up, um, I think it's called War Twenty One, right? And it, it's a very poignant seventies um, view of northeast of England, right? When we were pretty much, dare I say it, insular. Mm. I think it's probably early seventies. Right, well, I'm I'm clacking away, as you can probably hear me in the background. <laughs> I'm trying to find it for you. Because, um, again, Alex Glasgow was, was from Low Fell in Gateshead. A lot of people don't realise that, but uh, I'm but trying... He's a friend of my parents. Oh, brilliant. Well, there you go. Amazing. Uh, he was an incredible talent. Trying to find the, the Doctor Doesn't Come. The song is on YouTube, but obviously I don't want to play it if it's... No, feature I mean, that kind of stuff, but I'd love to see the lyrics. There's, uh, only, there's, only, there's only one word on it, which it's oh. negative, uh, but it's it's a big one. It's a it's a end of your career one is the thing. Um, mm -hmm. I see, appreciate that. <laughs> so you gotta you gotta be a tad careful. It's funny though because back then, those kind of words, whether you liked it or not, there was a there was a comedy on uh, on television where a man of colour lived next door to some white guy and the banter between them featured those kind of words all the time as I if it, as if it was nothing and you you hear I saw a little bit on YouTube and it makes you go God, you can't get away with you know you can't get away with that kind the, the, of I mean things have changed so totally for the good which is the one reason that I do um, appreciate PC mm. yeah yeah for sure because that shouldn't be used. Mm -hmm. um, but if you get the words up, you'll see what I mean. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get the, the lyrics and find the lyrics, and I will have them by the end of, end of the night, but it, it's going to take a little bit more time than uh, I've got. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to distract from, from talking to you. So um, if I can dig it out, even if I've got to bleep a bit, uh, I'll let people hear it because we're it, talking... It is, it is really prudent song for current situation with the whole Brexit thing and um, the, well let's say it, 50, right. 40, 52 of the population of the population keeping people who aren't from this country out of this country mm. Mm. and it, it's a very short song right? but it does say a lot especially with regards to it concerning doctors nurses, hospitals Right. Well, I'll get I'll get Hollywood McShane to uh, download a copy first, but especially done by Alex Glasgow because you mentioned him, so we'd want his version, and uh, get it, give it a good listen to, and uh, bleep whatever he's got to bleep, and we might uh, give a, a little taster of that. If we can do it tonight, we will. If not, it'll be next week. Okay, that's fine. Lovely stuff. Um, Thank you, Michael. Anything else, mate? Just one. Uh -huh. Can I give a little shout out to Jackie? Of course she can. I hope she's all right. That's great. Thanks a lot, Michael. All the best. Thanks. Right, bye-bye. What do you make of that? Using words that seem to be completely acceptable if they're on a rap video, uh, and if they're said by rappers, well, that's fine. Uh, and then you get a, a BBC presenter playing The Sun Has Got His Hat On, um, which is a very, very old 
a terrifically British song from back in the day, and that uses an N-word, Guy loses his job. And yet there's others, like there's a, a Red Hot Chili Pepper song called Give It Away, Give It Away, Give It Away, Give It Away, which is tremendous. And it's got an N-word in it. And there's a Bob Marley lyric that is just a little bit unacceptable too. Uh, or is it just, if you're flavour of the month, you can get away with that kind of stuff. Uh, if you're not, uh, well, you get sacked. Because uh, there is, I tell you, there's no middle ground. It's either wrong or it isn't wrong. Do you know what I mean? And if it's completely wrong, anybody playing any of those other things should suffer from it. Mark's been back on. He says, is there any way for me to get broadband in the flat and apartment that I'm in without being on a 12-month contract? Because I've got the flat for six months by law, then I can either carry it on or move out. And I find that I'm struggling within six months, so I don't want to be signed up to a 12-month contract for broadband. Um, I think they're looking, nowadays they're even looking, in some cases, for a two-year contract. They're not all just 12 months. But what you can do is, if you're in the same area, take your contract and take the broadband with you so that they'll set you up again somewhere else. If you move after six months, I know that they'll certainly do that. Hollywood McShane is going to try and find us a copy of Alex Glasgow. The doctor doesn't come or the doctor won't come. Uh, if you could download it and then take out the nasty word, if you can, and uh, stick it in, we'll have, we'll have a, a little listen to what is a very, very short song, apparently, but it's very appropriate to, uh, to Brexit. So uh, Tony's doing that as we speak. Um, uh, <laughs> Tony Best, the taxi driver, says, you've just reminded me of a TV clip when Fanny Craddock's husband ended the baking show by saying... <laughs> uh, no, that's that's another trap, Tony. I hope all of your donuts turn out... But uh, Most people know where we're going with that. If you don't, uh, get yourself onto YouTube. It is one of those classic moments. However, Sue from Washington, is at a mam's in Norfolk, apparently. Hello, Sue. Oh. Hi, Alan. Hello there. So you enjoyed uh, yourself down there? Yeah, yeah, but it was a bit of a surprise. Um, what it was, um, I, I just thought my daughter was coming, uh, coming down, right. like on the Friday. Uh -huh. And then um, on, the Thursday, on the Friday morning, I, I got up and she'd gone to work and there was a note on the, on the bench saying... Can you ask Dad to pick me up at two o'clock? Because she was finishing work at two. Right. To catch the train at half past three. So, and then it says, um, it says, turn over <laughs> and, um, and please, and can you pack another case as open? Well, I looked, because in, in the dining room, she'd left the suitcase ready for us to put in the car. Right. So I looked at the suitcase on the floor, thinking, Oh, she's got it where it's ripped a bit, so she wants me to put a, a clothes in a different suitcase. Right. And, and, I, and then I turned the page, and there's two railway tickets. Pack a case, because you come with us. It's a, a, a bit of a birthday present and early Christmas present. Wow. Um, I, I've never, for years, I've never been on a train for years. I think the last time I've been on a train <laughs> was when she was about four. Give over, yeah. really? Oh my yeah. goodness! Because the simple thing is, I just dare not go like anywhere like that in public buses, anything, in case I have seizures. Right, so, oh, I see. Right. So that was a surprise. And um, did you manage? I mean, you managed to get down there without any problems? Yeah, yeah. But what it was, she, I mean, my daughter's pretty clued up, and she said, "Look," she said, "because of all your like." Um, Conditions and that. She said they do them lanyards, the sunflower lanyards. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I got picked one of them at the railway station, mm -hmm. and, and we was just going to go on a, like a standard coach. Right. And she said, "But um, I'm going to talk to the station manager because she'd been actually um, relaying back and forth uh, on the um, L London North East Railway." Right. Um, Facebook thing uh -huh. and messenger thing and um, and she explained about all the conditions and that and what she was doing it for 
Right. And they said, well, when you, when you go to the station, central station, mm. go and talk to the central manager. Uh, we can't guarantee anything, but, you know, they might upgrade you. Mm. So we, we got upgraded. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Brilliant! <laughs> Yeah. You swanky fantastic. woman! That was it. <laughs> Would you like another cup of tea? Oh uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> we were offered food, everything, you know, and you don't have to pay when you're in first class. No, and of course not. We've, we've, everybody else had already paid. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to pay when it's yeah. first class. You don't have to yeah. pay when you put in there. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm so poorly. Oh, go on. <laughs> Yeah, no, yes. but honestly, when that was so funny <laughs> trying to get up on the train because they helped us with McKay. Right. But one of them had to get behind us and push us up. <laughs> I, I couldn't, <laughs> honestly, I couldn't get my leg up because right. on on the Thursday, oh my God, I, only I could do this. On the Thursday, me and my husband were trying to finish this uh, thousand piece puzzle off. Right. Because my daughter was, well, bring, bringing it down hmm. for my mum. Right. To, to do. Anyway, so there were still loads left, and on a Thursday afternoon, I stood, I started about half past one, started, and then I called my husband, come on, Bill, come and help us. And we didn't stop until we finished, and it was quarter past four. Give over. I mean, is this a jigsaw? Yeah, thousand piece jigsaw puzzle, what? yeah. What? And um, there was, I mean... I didn't, daughter, need, I didn't know that people <laughs> still did jigsaws. Oh, my, my mum loved them. Right. My daughter... She's done. We came on the Friday, and my mum said, I'm sick of this one that I've got here at the minute. I can't get the sky in. Right. So right. my daughter finished that off, and then last night, about 7 o'clock, um, she started another one and finished it this morning, and now, mm. she, started, now she started another one, and Jeepers. that's really finished. That's, that's <laughs> full. I mean, one of my ex-wives used to love doing jigsaws, uh, and I, I'm no longer with her because I caught her. Uh, keeping a piece on the side. Um, that, happens, that happens to be true. But uh, with respect to, to the uh, the jigsaw thing, I just thought that was like 30 years ago. I just thought it had um, gone pretty no. much. No. I, I, I do enjoy doing them, but I wouldn't be doing any more for a long time because when we finished, mm. I went to stand up because I'd been leaning too long. <laughs> My back lock. Oh, no, no. Pain. Yeah, it was horrendous. Yeah, that's um, not good. Oh, it was awful. Went all down my leg and everything. Oh, I was so couldn't sleep. I that always night. think though that you should. It takes you like the length of time that you've described to do these things. You should mm-hmm. put them in frames and make pictures out of them, yeah, and then and at least you can yeah. say I did that. You know. Yeah, but then you'd have pictures everywhere, wouldn't you? On your <laughs> well, you would. And, and that's that's that is true. It's just, and then you kind of pass them down. Because <laughs> I can remember, as I say, this ex used to uh, when she said, "Oh, it just calms me down." So okay, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> she would she would get a table and she'd empty the box of I don't know five hundred, not thousands, but five hundred, and she'd spend four and a half hours doing this thing, uh-huh. and she'd go there. And then the very first thing she did was then scrunch it all up and put it back yeah, in the box and you think, what? It, it Four does, and a half um, hours just to do that. It does kind of, I mean, because I've used a puzzle, which we've started, and and I've I've gone into a seizure, mm. but I've said, right, hang on, I'm going to stop myself from doing this. like, right. And I've gone and concentrated on the puzzle. Right, I see. brought us out of the seizure. So yeah, it, yeah, that's it, good. It, if it, works for you. if it works the, for you, I the other the other thing is um, I I met my friend this morning, my school friend. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember me phoning in, or it was uh, probably last year. Mm. Um, and I asked if anyone had a like a VHS. Yes, like, VHS recorder. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, and the lady kindly phoned in and and uh, lent me it, and I sorted all my tapes out. Uh-huh. And then my mum said, oh, I've got a load here. So last year we brought it up and um, sorted all hers out. And, you know, if there was anything on it she wanted to keep, we was going to get them converted. Mm-hmm. And my friend has been doing the same with hers. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so I said, oh, I said, well, do you want... I said, I've got the machine. I left it here. Right. I said, it's there. Do you want that? So she's gone and took it <laughs> today. <laughs> and then... We bumped into her, uh, like, earlier on this evening when we took my mum's dog out, and she said, 
oh, she said, we've, had, we've set it up and we've been looking at all the all the videos and I've ah. brought back so many memories. There you so go, it's all good. Thank, thanks to the lady, you know, Isabel, yeah. who um, lent us it in the first place. I've now got my friend and she's doing the she's same She's doing thing. the same. Happy, happy days for everybody. Yeah. Hey, lovely to hear from you, Sue. Thank, have yeah. a, have a yeah. lovely time down there. Yep. Yeah. Get back Thank safe. Take care. Bye bye. I love that. You don't have to pay in first class. She didn't pay in first class. She got upgraded, which is great. Makes you feel like a king or a queen if it's ever happened to you. Holiday gifts. Leah's been on. Alan, I had some brilliant holidays. I've been lucky to go to Goa in India. Wow. Australia, Crete, uh, a, a Greek island. They were all lovely. But the best gift I've ever brought back. Now, you see, that to me, so far, I'm really impressed because that's that's a long way away she's been. But the best gift I've brought back was from Blackpool. A pair of fish flops. They're lovely. They're rubber fish shoe-shaped flip-flops. I will send you a picture. We love you. We love the night owls. And she says, Coddy's fish flops. Look them up on Google because I can't send a photo. Now... Um, I don't know whether the, these things are still available, but let me let me very quickly cuddle. And I'm going to cuddle while we take a quick break. All nasty hits they had, in the Human League. Don't you want me? Probably the biggest of the big. Yeah, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Anyway, we heard about the guy with the broken piston. Uh, Tony has sent this in. I have often been um, broke and... Uh, Quite drunk at the same time. You know what I'm saying. You know what he's saying too. Um, but yes, I think we've all all been there. Some of us still are. Uh, let's crack on. You're one clue in. We're looking for a famous album. If you can identify it, how is it one that you've got in your collection? Well, we will find out. Now, we heard about that tuna. Uh, yeah, a little bit before. And, well... We are not alone, for in Germany there are many things of a very strange name and we only have one person who could possibly tell us about that and it is, of course, Linda from Barris Ford. Hello, Linda. Hello. Hello. Hello, Linda. Oh, oh hello, Alan. Hello. <laughs> Sounded like I was a surprise there. Yeah, I, I was listening to the music. Oh, that's good. And then, I, and then I had the radio on and I didn't know where the hell I was. Right, well, anyway, we, you're back and you're on and you're live and everything, so good to talk to you. What you got for me tonight, then? Yeah, well, what was it? I, I got some Fanny as well. R OK. <laughs> so what is it in Germany, then? Is it tuna? It's No, it's potato dumplings. R right. Um, and is it spelt the same way? Or no, not? it's spelt P F. A-N-N-I. Perfani. That sounds more Welsh than German. That's the other half of your <laughs> personality, isn't it? I popped down to Perfani on Thursday. <laughs> Does sound a bit like that, doesn't it? But uh, <laughs> So, but it's, it's potato dumplings. Yeah, I'm going to send you the packet. Right, OK, yeah, I'd love to have a look at, at your... Um... Out of date next month. Right. <laughs> well, make sure you eat them. I mean, don't, you don't have to send me the packet with the dumplings in or anything. Just when you've when you've dumplinged, mm -hmm. then I'll, I'll have a look at it definitely. Because all over the world, there's a there's a million of these that are peculiar or, or funny looking. Yeah. And uh, doesn't surprise me that Germany's got one or two. Well, actually, definitely. I mean, I've I've seen that on the packet all these years. Uh huh. You know, um, forty. No. 44 years I see that on the packet. And I bet you've never thought anything of it until no, you just... No, I never thought anything of it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that would be the case. <laughs> oh, dear me. It was funny, though, not it? <laughs> I know, but this is it. I mean, Josie lives in Gateshead, and she's just sent in... There's a kind of lager beer... Yeah. ..called Vagina. V vagina. Oh, is it? Yeah. V E R G I. If it's German, it'll be vagina. All oh, right, but it, if you're English and you read it, it says vir virgina. Yeah. I suppose. <laughs> right. I'm oh, desperate. Dear. I'm desperate to get you. No, you couldn't say that in a bar. What was it? Uh, we'll have to talk about little Willies now. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> one, one of the other ones that she sent in, I have actually seen. It's a, it's a type of, you know, if, you, if you're obsessed with sweeties and you can't give them up, but you're on a diet, they came out with these vitamin and mineral enriched candies. Yeah. And they're called AIDS. Are they? A-Y-D-S, not the A-I-D-S. Oh, no. But uh, if you imagine walking home from... From the supermarket, where have you been? What have you? Well, I've got AIDS, you know. What? <laughs> but I, I love the idea that we've got so many strange and peculiar. Well, that's peculiar what makes the world go round, isn't it? It is absolutely. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie is in Stockton on Tees, and he's just sent me an email saying, uh, I, "I'm a fan of faggots." <laughs> yeah, I like faggots. But well, there you see. Well, there you are. <laughs> but there's there's other meanings. You see, that's the thing. Well, if you're called a faggot in 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 um, Wales, you daft faggot, you know. You... What does it mean? It, it, it's not like to do with with sexuality or anything, no, because the, no. there's there's one of those names that's attached to to male sexuality, and it's it's horrible. Yeah. But because my mother used to say to me, "Yes, stupid faggot," <laughs> and and but she didn't mean it that way. I don't think she meant it that mm. way. You know. Well, well, in in Wales they say, "Oh, you're a right little messer," if you if you if, if you're a baby and you've and you've messed your pants. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's different up in the north, I think. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't know what it, what it is up in the north. I just no. know that it's, it's rude. Yeah, well, it's it's not what you want. No, is it? So stop pooing your pants and you get away with it. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny, it's funny, you know. It's not that far away, Wales, is it? The terrible thing is now that I've you see the, the thing about talking on the radio is as soon as you mention something, yeah, and we've just mentioned pooing pants, yeah, somebody will go. I'll have to tell them about the time <laughs> <laughs> that I did that. Oh, dear. It's going to be a long night after all, isn't it? Oh, I think so, Alan. Oh, dear, dear. <laughs> got to be starting something if you want to be starting something. Right. <laughs> I've also been sent... This has just come in, and it's coming from Tim. And Tim's in Durham. Yeah. And his girlfriend is Korean. Right. And uh, there was a... F a Big kind of French influence in a lot of the the stuff that they sell in Korea, apparently, and they sell. Uh, it's like from I've got a picture of the box here. It looks on the outset a bit like a fig roll, you know, a biscuit with like a dark, but it's chocolate inside instead of fig. Right. If you if so, that's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. But it's called cock dasses. <laughs> Cock dasses. <laughs> well, I presume it's because it's French and it's got like the extra cock da dasse, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But um, it's bad enough. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's bad. Milk chocolate uh, cookies. Oh, That's what they are. So they're probably very nice, I'm guessing, mm -hmm. too. So and there you, you know, go. I had a donkey when I was out in Spain. <laughs> 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 a real one or one of them big... One of those big ones. Big, yeah. Because I, I, brought, I brought one of them home, like, every... Do you know what colour it was? Oh, mine was, like, multicoloured. No, bits. mine was orange and brown. Orange and brown. Well, the one that I brought back mm. on the plane, I prodded myself with a needle because they're, they're not sewn together. No. They're pushed together with needles. With, with pins. Pins. Pins, So yeah. I, I got progged, and by the time and I got... By the Sense time I was, I was nearly bleeding to death by the time. Studs, they were. Studs and pins, that's yeah. right. And they, it all came apart within a couple of days and there was bits all over the house, so you end up uh, getting shot. And I went donkey. all the way to Germany. Wow. I had it in, I had it in 1975. Uh-huh. And then I thought, my donkey's coming with me. <laughs> and I took my donkey to Germany. Right. And, um, <laughs> and then I gave it away to somebody then. The thing that I, I, one of the things that I do like, if ever I'm seeing people off, and occasionally people will say, Alan, can you give us a lift to the airport? I'm going to wherever they're going. Mm -hmm. And I'm quite happy to, to how can we go to the airport, wherever the airport is. And one of the things I love doing, even if I'm not going away, and I'd much always rather go away, of course, but if I'm seeing somebody off, I'll hang around the airport because, first of all, you can play Spot the New Trainers. Mm hmm. 
Because mm. everybody's got a new... Even if they're, they're wearing clothes from five years ago, I guarantee you, those thing. trainers are going to be spanking new well, and yeah. glowing in the dark, these mm -hmm. trainers. And the other thing is, you watch people coming from places because you can tell where they're coming Where's from. from. Yeah, you can. I think you can. And I one in particular, the plane came in uh, to, I think it was Manchester Airport, and it was coming in from one of the, either Jamaica or Barbados or one of the Caribbean islands, and about every third person had beads in their hair. Because obviously one of the things, when you're sitting on the beach, people come around saying, would you like some beads, please? And you go, no, no. Oh, go on then. Yeah. And you, you think when you come home that you will look amazingly cool. I, I always go dressed up going to the airport. Do you? Yeah. Well, every, everybody else just goes in tatty track suits and, and like, day glow no, trainers. To the nines, I do, Alan. Uh huh. I, I like the remarks <laughs> I get. Right, no, that's hey, that's fair. If you want to go looking like Hollywood, you oh, yeah. you go for it, absolutely. Yeah, why not? Huh? Yeah. Oh, Janine's just sent this one in. Uh, it's it's called colon. Now, colon. I know what my colon is. No, I don't. I know what it helps you poo. Hey. Helps you poo. Say that again, Alan. It helps you poo. Does it? Yeah. Oh, right. So there you go. So you wouldn't want to eat a cream colon oh. in. This is <laughs> this is a cream colon and it looks a bit like um, an Arctic roll a bit. Is it really? Yeah, it looks a bit it looks a bit like that. <laughs> We're getting them the flying Arctic. in now. Oh dear, a golden <clears throat> circle SARS. That's a virus, isn't it? <laughs> Buy a can of SARS, <laughs> play me. Oh yeah. Send that yeah. to a country you don't like. No. Double cream betweens. Well, that's, they look nice. Chocolate sandwich cookies. They look, they're, they're uh, some other companies rip off Oreo. They're, ex they're exactly like an Oreo. You Is know it really? They? Yeah. There's a lot of rip offs out there as well. But no, I, I'm, I'm glad that you go dressed up to the nines because you'd be the only super smartly dressed person on an aeroplane. I really, I am. Because I, I, I am. You, you see people slouching about in. And even people coming up to me and saying, Oh, you look lovely. And, there you oh, go. Where did you get your dress from? And, wow. Yeah. Well, well, that's impressive. Is it not uncomfortable, though, sitting in something super smart on a plane? Well, no, no. No? Okay. And what was it? If it was white, then you'd have to watch it. Everything that you were, 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 you were wearing. You I don't tend to go for white. Right, no. But otherwise, I like white. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've just been sent a <laughs> They're piling in right now. David McKee has just sent this thing in, and it's instant ramen noodles. Mm -hmm. Cheap, fast, and easy. <laughs> and it's called... <laughs> I think I was married to her. And the other... What it says here, instant ramen, cheap, fast, and easy, <laughs> no fat, you know, zero fat. Yeah. But the name of the product is Soup for Sluts. <laughs> it's, that's what Soup for Sluts. I, I'm presuming sluts has another meaning somewhere down the road, but we kind of know what it means as well. Oh, yes, this, I, Since oh. we opened this door, it's been quite entertaining. Oh, hang on. Here's another one as well. Glenn, he's in Hexham. He's just come back from... Oh, come to the party. And he's just down the road, absolutely. Um, he's just come back and he brought with him in his case yoghurt and strawberry yoghurts. That's marango, apparently. But it's called bat milk. Bat milk? Yeah. How the, mm. hell, how the hell do they milk them? <laughs> I wonder. I was going to say. Was, would be blunt to that come out of them. And eat, every time you get near a bat, it'll sense you're coming because it's got that... <laughs> thing, but there you oh, go, bat milk. From your door. <laughs> Fantastic, I know. Oh, there you go. Four. Del oh, this, this is an uh, an ice lolly's just coming as well from Dom. Thanks, Dom. Uh, it's it's a Walls m brand, but it's obviously overseas. You know the Walls brand. They've got that little heart thing. Uh -huh. It's like a logo. Yeah. Little heart thing. Mm -hmm. Well, this one has the heart thing, so it's obviously the same company that does walls. It's called Agnesia in German. 
Well, it's called streets in this country. All right. And uh, <laughs> the the lolly looks like it's covered with cornflakes. You know, okay. it's got like the crunchiness mm -hmm. on the outside. Then it's got ice cream in the middle. Right. And a layer of of ice lolly right. underneath the crusty bits. Mm. And it's called Golden Gear Time. <laughs> and the sell by on it says four delicious chances to have a gear time. <laughs> and I know places I where you where pretty. you get even more chances I'm than pretty. that. I feel pretty, I'm pretty. Well, this is it. They've stolen a word, haven't they? They've stolen gear from us now, but that's yeah. that's how it is. But the thing is, gay is a nice word to use. It's a lovely word. Yeah. Ab absolutely, yes, it is. What was it? I'm going to tell you about the party, though, just to let everybody know. Oh, do, know. yes, let everybody know. It's on Saturday, the 2nd of November. Right. 2019. Yep. And it's at 1800 hours, that's 6 o'clock at night. 1800 hours. Till one o'clock in the morning. Right. And it's in Barrisford Community Hall. Right. Now, if you go to the commu if you wanted to get there at six o'clock. Uh huh. Uh, before six o'clock, you can go to Barrisford Arms. The pub, right? The pub, yeah. Right. And 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 um, get together there before the party starts. Yes, because you blame me if you're going to the party, you need a drink, wouldn't you? Really? Well, no, yeah. I would have thought yeah. so. Yeah. And there's and there's a bar open all night as well. Fabulous. Um, what was it? And and then anybody that comes, I wish them a great time because we're going to have a great time. Yeah. What was it? I've got a lot of people helping me. Uh huh. Great. I've got everything organised. Good. And um, it's a long way out, so I hope you get a good crowd there. Yeah, and I really I, do. And I hope you can come as well, Alan. Not sure yet. I'm trying to. I'm working on it though. Oh, so fingers okay. crossed. Oh, fingers crossed, yeah. For sure. And the, all, the cash for kids will come in as well. Oh, that's great. And, and I've sent an invitation out to Steve and Karen as well. Oh, there you go. So uh, a lot of people that you know that, that will be along there. It too. would be lovely if, you, if everybody turns Fantastic. Hey, well, let's hope so. And thank you for coming on, Linda, with uh, with up with your German <laughs> version of um, <laughs> potato dumplings. Thanks for your call. Great I'll to hear from you. Out to you, Alan. I'll, I'll watch out for it. Enjoy, okay, enjoy your dumplings. There you go. And enjoy your evening. I will. Thank you, Linda. Bye. So there is Linda. Amazing night in uh, Barrisford. If you can get, go up and meet everybody. It'd be fabulous. I'm uh, not sure whether it's ads or, or yeah, I think it is. We'll take a quick uh, ad break and then we've got uh, a little song from somebody that you know very, very well indeed. Night Owls. <laughs> With Alan Robson. You never know who's going to call next. Now, one of the people that I like best because she's got the squarest and coolest square American style chin uh, that I've ever seen on any female. Just square chin. Almost like the um, the figures that you would get in Thunderbirds. You know, square chins. And her name's Belinda Carlyle. Now, she moved to France. So I asked her about living there, especially in light of what's happening at this precise moment. Well, the last time I was talking to you, you were telling me about an idyllic life in France and also obviously touring everywhere that you have to tour. Are you mm -hmm. still living over there? Yeah, I'm between uh, France and Los Angeles, and, and um, yeah, it's great. I mean, you know, here it's, you know, they're both extreme. You know, this is in the middle of the city, very mm. urban, lots of lots of sirens, you know, <laughs> and action outside. And uh, and then in France, it's in, you know, a dirt road with lots of chickens. So, wow, great. Um, you know, just when I'm getting sick of one, it's time to head to the other, so I'm very lucky. Now, the chicken's not for eating, though, because you, you're still a no. veggie, aren't you? No, I'm a vegetarian. In fact, I was on a U.S. postage, postage stamp just recently. Hey. Being, um, a famous vegetarian, along with Paul McCartney and... And uh, Morrissey and and a lot of other people. Fantastic! Well, well done, you. Yeah. And I know that you you put some songs into the uh, the Peta campaign as well. Bless the beasts and children, you did, didn't you? Right. I've been working with Peta for for quite a long time, almost almost twenty five years, I think, wow. maybe even longer. So um, I love their organization. Um, you know, people might think they're a bit extreme, but mm. they make a lot of noise and they sure. and they change a lot of lives. I mean, have you always been a vegetarian, or were you, were you eating dead things earlier in your life? I've 
Um, yeah, I ate dead things all through until about age 28 when I, and then I became, um, I was a vegetarian for, for, you know, quite a few years and then I fell off the wagon in France. Right. Started eating meat again. What, what tempted it, you back into the, into the dead I things? I don't know, a carnivore? Um, <laughs> probably, I don't know, the poulet roti in France is, uh. is um, well, it's just awesome. yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then I just started because I have a, I just started feeling really like every time I ate it, even though I was like, I guess loving the taste at the time, until it started tasting really awful to me. Mm. Um, I still feel really bad about um, supporting factory farming, which is right. a totally evil industry. And I just really, and after a while, after you know, while I just couldn't do it anymore. And I have a really strong yoga practice, so right. that eating you know, any form of violence and eating meat is a form of violence. Um, you know, I just I myself I couldn't do it, so right. I stopped, and and I have zero desire, and you know, it I, it was just. And, and actually, it's been about a year and a half now since I've been veggie again. Right. Well, welcome back on the wagon. There you go. Belinda Carlyle, now she mentioned, <laughs> I, I don't want to upset her because she's she's very, very super right on about don't eat meat. I still do. And chicken, the thing about rotisserie chicken, now we've all seen it in a shop somewhere, you'll see usually at the right, right at the back of the shop. Not not anywhere near the front. Right at the back of the shop, you'll see a rotisserie that's got a few a couple of chickens turning in it, but it's far enough away so you can't smell it, you can't see it. It's just in the back of a shop, and then they'll get a couple out and they'll put them in the display at the front, so essentially they dry out and dry out to be nothing. However, in Paris, what they do, a, a local butcher shop, not necessarily in the right in the city centre, but uh, just off the front, you'll walk past a butcher shop and outside the shop, they've got a case higher than you, like eight foot high, with chickens just turning over. And the uh, this will make um, Belinda sick if she's still listening. Um, the fat drips down on the next chicken, which drips down on the next chicken, and, and round and round and round. And, and they put boiled potatoes in the bottom that are roasting and they put a few onions in and a few peppers and stuff and if you buy a rotisserie chicken like she did knock, it knocked her off the wagon um, they're the juiciest chicken I've ever tasted in my life and I would get on a tube train and go 15 stops to another uh, on the outskirts of Paris to get one of those chickens and you would get it back to wherever you were staying and it would still be red hot, and you've got your potatoes swimming in the gravy. It was just, I'm sorry, veggies, but can't blame me. She just brought that memory back now, and I'm starving. Heaven is indeed a place on earth. It's next to Jarry. And Belinda Carlyle, fantastic. I love her voice. It's tremendous. The only thing I never got away with, I don't know about you, and I know it was a big thing in America, the Go-Go's. And if you talk to her in America, everybody's blown away that she was in the Go-Go's. It was like saying, I was in the Beatles or I was in Oasis or something. But uh, I could never get away with the Go-Go's. And uh, I've tried, because I like Belinda Carly, I've tried listening back. Didn't quite happen. Getting a few more of those um, items of food and similar. Ben Mabon has said, um, since we're on this topic... Can I recommend some muff liquor? Um, it is a, a liquor that you buy. It's Irish coffee, and it's the best Irish coffee you can get from the, the muffliquorcompany.com if you want to go onto its website. There's also urinal, <laughs> which is apparently a Polish hot drink. Uh, can't even begin to say uh, the description on the packet because it's it's Polish. Uh, you've also got child shredded meat, delicious, delicious classic. I think it's it's like baby food, I think. Child shredded meat. Then pea cola and also 
Barfy. <laughs> it's a type. It's a type of burger, like frozen beef burger. Um, four medallions de carne. Yeah, four beefy burgers essentially. Barfy. And looking at what the burger looks like after it's cooked, I can understand how it gets its name. Now you do try. And you know, a little bit earlier, somebody said Cuddy's fish flops was the best thing that they brought back from Blackpool. I've just looked them up on the net. Sprilla, sprilla fish flip flops, fish flippers. They look like real fish. At first, I thought they, they can't be. Them. But you put your head, uh, or your, your toes rather, into the gills of the fish, and it, your toes come out the mouth, from what I can see, and your foot's along the back of the fish. But they look like real fish. You know, they get green fish or yellow fish, but they look, <laughs> they look like real fish. And incidentally, talking about foods with, with names that could have been better chosen, a chocolate bar in Poland called Plop. <laughs> Excuse me, I, I want a Plop. <laughs> uh, third door to the left. Um, so, if you can think of any more, if you've ever come across any, do share with us. But what I'd also like you to ring in about right now is are you one of these people that do buy just on the spur? I'm walking home, it's raining, I'll have a crunchy. That'll book me up. Uh, what is the thing that you can't resist? You walk, maybe you've got to walk past a fish shop on your way home and you get that vinegar thing and you go, oh, um, maybe I should take one of them home and save me cooking and all those kind of things. What's the kind of things that you can't avoid or the, the temptation that you can't resist? If you've got any... Pick up your telephone right now. 0191 488 From an amazing album, Jagged Little Pill. Alanis Morissette, my goodness. Still one of my all-time favourite albums. Very, very cool. Now, we have things to talk about. We have things to do. But we want you to remember, pick up your telephone. We need your calls. As many as we possibly can. Let's make a difference and spread the word of the night owls. And let Sunday become contagious and spread like an outbreak across the week. That's what we're aiming for. So let's see if it can happen. Nothing happens as quickly as we would like it. Uh, we want to find out what you can't resist. However, it is time right now for me to bring the team on board for a thing that we call the blah. Okay, so what is the blah? Well, you should know by now, but if you don't... I'm joined by Nicola from our switchboard. Hello. And she's an entrepreneur. And also, Hollywood uh, McShane, producer to the stars. Hello. Who's never been and never used Nicola's services <laughs> as an entrepreneur. <laughs> I haven't. No, well, there you are. So what is it that you do anyway? You might as well plug it. Try and beautify people, so nails, hair. And where are you? Lashes. We're in a gate concert. And what's it called? Indulgence. There you go. So, so you want to go and see her, that's what she does. Um, she beautifies people. Blimey. Just not myself. I was, I was, I was actually thinking, <laughs> you're sitting next to, to, to Hollywood McShane and you've made no difference in his life at all. You, I should pop in. The change, do with it. <laughs> the changes you can make. But what we're doing is we're taking a look to see what's trending, what's tweeting, what people are talking about, and what you guys will be able to see on the front page of your national newspapers tomorrow morning. Well, this morning. We're already there, really. Monday's national newspaper front pages. Let's go down and we can have a chin wag about all of them, really. Starting off with the Times. Downing Street says Labour is trying to stop Brexit. Well, you will remember that uh, for a while, um, Jeremy Corbyn wouldn't say whether he was for or against when other members of the Labour Party were saying we are a Remain party now. And uh, the majority of people who are in the Labour Party... Want us to stay in Europe. They think it's better for the country, rightly or wrongly. Um, so now Downing Street have twigged that after <laughs> after all of that, that they're trying to stop Brexit. And Meghan, my friends, told me not to marry Harry. Now, isn't that just typical of friends? 
Don't know why you married him, a multi-millionaire prince. What are you doing? <laughs> but did you did you see the video on it? I seen the lo- heard getting interviewed, and she'd said um, it was all to do with the tabloids, and that's why they shouldn't get married. But her and life's been in the tabloids yeah. since since she gets on on TV, I presume. Yeah. So. So she's in the limelight anyway, isn't yeah. she? So it's not going to make any difference. Do, my my only argument is. A lot of celebrities have, like, five years in the sun where they marry somebody, they get five years, and it's, like, wonderful in their their Angelina and Brad or their Mm. their Jennifer Aniston and the other one, their Ashton Kutcher and Demi Moore, you know? And then then after four or five years, they're gone. Would you think she's going to show busy in five years? Could you imagine that the... The divorce deal that you're going to get from divorcing a prince, for heaven's sake. My goodness. Well, it's like they made the big uproar with Kate, didn't they? And mm-hmm. then now you don't even hear anything about her. She's played a blinder mind abroad, hasn't she? Yeah. I mean, she's been amazing. But, nah, I don't know. I don't I, I, I view them like like they're a, t- a TV show, almost, the royals. And I, I, I've got nothing against them. I know they make money for the country. They're... And they're a business that's in profit as opposed to loss. So you can only say, well done, but mm. are you royalists? Are you not royalists? You, you I mean, they're nice for the country, bringing in tourism, and it's nice to have, isn't it? I mean, no one else has got a royal family that is so famous. That is true. That is true. And this is the guy who watches Jodie Shaw. Anyway, Daily Mail. Oh, I don't watch that. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Daily Mail, what's on the front page there? Corbyn plans to sabotage the Prime Minister's deal and set up a second referendum. Fury, fury at Labour plot to wreck Brexit. Well, that's what Remainers will do, isn't it? I mean, is it a surprise, do you think? Uh, I find it just kind of weird that it's a surprise. And Michelle is on the prowl on the red carpet, but I don't know anybody famous called Michelle. I don't Michelle think... Obama? No, no, this, this lady is, is of a different ethnicity. Uh, but... Uh, She's Michelle somebody, anyway. She's on the... Michelle Daily Keegan. Michelle Keegan. Ah, all right, probably that, probably that. The Independent. One point puts Wales into the semi-finals. You didn't there. And Labour set to trigger a final say vote. That's a referendum this week. The party's ready to back the Prime Minister's deal if it's put to the public in a new poll. 200,000 people sign a letter in 48 hours demanding a second referendum. So uh, that's what the Independent says. The Sun, Prince on Will's Rift. Did you, did you know there was a rift? Back to the Royals again. Did you know there was a rift between Harry and, and William? No. It might just be to sell papers, is it? it? It could be bad blood brothers. Mm. Harry says, we're on different paths. Uh, well, well, they are quite different, yeah. aren't they? yeah. <laughs> they both got different dads. I mean, no, I mean, not, necess- <laughs> not necessarily. But we, I mean, everybody thinks that the ginger ones. Uh, Has Harry been in touch with you lately? No, I mean, uh, <laughs> gingers stay together. In fact, he did try to copy my beard, which is why I've shaved my cheeks. There you go, just so I didn't look like him. Um, and also, it's, <laughs> it's Bojo versus the Brexit Bandits round two. <laughs> yeah, that's the sun, doesn't it? Uh, the Guardian newspaper, Labour seeks a new alliance to kill off the Prime Minister's Brexit deal and high pollution days send hundreds of people to hospital. Have you been aware of... Because uh, you work in the city, you not so much, but concerts are a very busy place, lots of cars yeah, about. It is, yeah. So uh, are you ever aware that, oh, this is a, a thick kind of atmosphere? Well, it's, we're on a busy roundabout here, so it's yeah. got to be something. You would have thought. Right, but could you ever feel it? No, I never feel it. No, no, because I'm, I'm lucky because I'm up in the, in the borders. I can tell the difference, like, really in the air. summer more, when I get on the ho- home, the air's a lot, like, crisper. Mm. Do you know, like, in the winter, you can tell the difference from the summer to the winter. Absolutely, yeah. So you, I can see that, but I, I don't feel it. It's not like... No, because people say that, or oh, you go out and you can tell it's a bad day, which is why people in Japan started wearing the masks, those little yeah. face masks. I, I would hate to think we Busy there, this. though. I mean, I would, congestion. Well, I know, but it's, a, it's having an effect in sending us to hospital. The Daily Telegraph, the Prime Minister faces guerrilla war over a new vote on the deal. 
they want to say, yes, we, we'll, we'll vote for your deal, provided you stick a, a referendum on the end of it, and, if, and you've got to stick to the record referendum. But they said that last time, and it didn't stick to the referendum there. So who, who knows? The Daily Mirror, Harry on William. We are on different paths, but I'll always be there for him. There you go. A brilliant football pullout inside, apparently, and Amazon scandal. Oh, did you hear about the You know Amazon? Mm-hmm. The, you've had stuff delivered by yeah. them. I, I have to. Treated like slaves. Exhausted workers claim that gruelling targets leave them in a zombie state. I've heard that before. It's not the first time they've been... But I, I remember driving... We, we did some shows up in Scotland, and when we were driving back, we were coming down kind of glasgow mm-hmm. coming back this way. And I remember driving past an Amazon distribution warehouse and we started driving past it and just kept going and going yeah and up in scotland so they've got a warehouse that it's almost the size of a, of a town it's a huge thing so, so busy now, can't imagine it? what it's like inside uh, to be that kind of size must have hundreds of people on it the information newspaper labor is to back the deal if a second rent referendum is included. Well, that does put a cat among the pigeons because Boris will not want that. The Metro newspaper, goalie James pays strictly penalty. Not sure. Do you watch strictly no, dancing? No, nah. uh, I know a lot, of, a lot of the listeners will, so they'll know what's going on. And also, Boris says, now we have the numbers. Uh, and he's fairly sure that he's got enough to see the deal through. I remember Theresa May saying that at least three times, but... Uh, uh, time will tell. Financial Times, Johnson sticks to a Brexit deal as faith rises in a Westminster victory. That's the Financial Times saying that, so you never know. And that is our national newspaper front pages. I hope there was something there that interests you. Over to you, Nick. What you got then? I think 99% of people are unrelated to this, but we all know someone that snores. Me. Yes, Guilty. You, could, you could do with one of these. Um, so there's a gadget come out that's called the Somni Belt. So it doesn't look very cool, but it's like a gadget. It's probably about five centimetres in width, right? two in height, and you've got to stick it on the middle of your forehead. So when you're asleep, you go to, you go to bed on your side. Right. As you roll over your back, which is when you normally it's snow, snow. Yeah. it buzzes, so it like sends a vibration through, so it kind of wakes you a little bit from your sleep. To make you go back onto your side to stop you from snoring. So you're I still working, even, waking so the other half up. <laughs> well, no, it's like a vibration, but oh. so because it's, it's on your forehead, it's like, and then uh-huh. oh, I'll roll over. Right. The, I can't imagine it working, but the only thing that I can say about snoring things, and I, for those of you at home who who've got somebody in the family that that is a snorer, because I, and I have been found out in court, very very uh, horrific level of snoring. Uh, I've tried those little things that you stick on your nose that's supposed to mm. open your tubes. I've tried the ones that you stick up your nose that's supposed to open your tubes. I've even gone to the expensive cost of sending off for this thing that you put in your mouth and you, you oh, put like a bite a on it, like like you would bite if you were getting yeah. false teeth. Or something. Yeah. You bite this thing. You keep and it in your mouth, don't you? You keep it in your mouth, but what they don't tell you is that <laughs> 200 gallons of saliva seems to come from nowhere and suddenly your entire pillow is soaking. <laughs> and also, can you imagine lying in bed next to your partner and you're saying, <laughs> I got it, I think you look very sexy tonight. Yeah. Yeah. And she gave me a kiss. I used to go out with someone that snored really bad and I used to like nip the nose and everything. Like I was really bad. Like, bad. And then at one point, he would snore that much. I'd never touch him, I'd give him an elbow or whatever. Yeah. But he would like go... <laughs> And stop for ages, and I was like, oh I do that. Killed them. I do that. And then it was. I was like, oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> but this apparently, so it a thir- it's helped a third of people, right. and it's meant to. So if you're in a deep sleep and you're snoring, and you well, or you go on your side, it'll buzz and it wakes mm. you a little bit. Right. So it's not meant to disturb your other people. No, I oh, mean, it, who knows? It, it might help, but uh, all of the I ones that I've tried, I've. I must say, I've I've never got close to a one that that's really worked. Just for me, the, the key is, and this, this is absolutely true, and any, anybody that's got a snorer in the house will know, make sure that the non-snorer gets to sleep first. Because if they can go get under, 
Then the guy can snore as much as he like because you're already yeah. gone. You've already, yeah. My mum's, but she sounds like a drowning babe. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, it she, she wakes the whole house up. Uh, I'm, really I'm, I have been known to, to vibrate ornament <laughs> 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 off the side table. So, okay, Hollywood McShane, what do you have for yeah, us? Yeah, this is weird and wonderful things left behind when, you know, when you've sold your car. Um, people are leaving things in their cars. Have you never never bought a car and found something, you know, mysterious in there? Mind, I've just bought a, a new car. It's off my brother, and I hope he's not listening, but I've found loads of money. Have you? Like, just random Ooh. bits of money everywhere. Brilliant. Well, money so, is on there. Someone left an envelope in a car with £10,000 cash in. What? No, I know, imagine. A four-year-old out-of-date um, tin of baked beans. <laughs> A blood transfusion machine <laughs> has been found in one. A box of ashes as well. Oh, what would he do with those? Because he don't know who's the art to return you, them. Uh, but if you've got your logbook, you've got the previous. Well, yeah, you could just contact the contact before, all of them and see how you there could be the, lost them. a dead relative. You lost your nana. I know. Um, a pack of 20 shotgun shells. Crazy. An unused boxed microwave. That's the can he find. That's great. Um, a fiancé's engagement ring attached to a spare key. And an inflatable man. As well, oh. but some apparently some women though, if mm. you if you drive around late at night, put dress a male dummy up and put like a hat and a scarf and an overcoat on them. Because you you were just thinking dirty thoughts no, about an inflatable like, man. Where, where? I've never seen. But no, they, they, no, they put them on just so yeah. they they don't look like they're alone. Oh, they looks like they're out with a boyfriend or something. Yeah. They, they feel oh, more I secure. See. People normally run the other way when they see me coming. No, so. I don't think so. But uh, bottom line with the stuff, what have you found? In something that you've bought, maybe you've bought a chest of drawers and you found something, or maybe it's a car. What have you found in there? I once remember getting my car back from a service, and in the back, they'd obviously took it out. They said they took it out for a test drive. They'd done something like 150 mile, you know. So it wasn't just. We'll take it uh, like two mile up the road just to make sure it's all right. They took it out for the day by the sound of wow. things. And when I, I put the, the back down, I looked inside. There was uh, two uh, two pop bottles, half a bottle of wine, crisp packets, wow. sausage rolls. and So they'd, obviously, they'd had a bit, of, a bit of a picnic <laughs> in, in the back. Nah, I just, just stuck them in a bin. And, wow. Hey, you know, what do you do? Well, what are you, what are you complaining about? That they... They well, had the dinner while they were working on the car. Or just being out, out for a car. day trip or something. They could have been <laughs> out at the zoo in your car. Could have been, I know, could have done, could you, I would have hated it if they'd gone to that place where the monkeys pull all, your, yeah. oh, all yeah. the stuff off. <laughs> but anyway, that is loosely what we call the blah, but there's one more person got a little bit something to tell us all, and that is Rod Stewart. We're going to play one of his classics with... Uh, with uh, Ray Jackson playing mandolin. Thank you very much to uh, to Nicola and also to Hollywood McShane. Rod Stewart up immediately after this. There we have him, Rod Stewart, my man, fabulous. And speaking of fabulous, something is happening, and very, very soon indeed, because we've got Craig from Peter Lee on the line. Let's get him on the show as soon as we can. Hello, Craig. Hello, Alan. You all right? Hello, yes, good. Just thought it was worthwhile telling everybody about something rather spectacular. Yeah, well, we, are we allowed to mention the big C word yet? You can. Cash for kids, yes. Please do. Cash for kids and Christmas. Yeah, I know it sounds like it's a long way away, but it's it's surprisingly close. Now, I remember coming down with a team mm-hmm. and seeing... Because uh, you drive a Vectra, and it's... Not now, I've moved to the darker side. Yeah, <laughs> you used to drive a Vectra, but you're still part of the Vectra Sport yes, Club. Yes, we are. And uh, you've got a whole load of uh, guys that do. Mm-hmm. And I, I came down there to Dalton Park, and there wasn't just Vectras there, but you you had truck drivers pulling up in, the, in their trucks, all loaded down with toys for, yeah. for cash for kids. It was tremendous what you guys did. And you're doing it again this year? We're doing it bigger and better this year because we're bringing, uh, like, another car group, another great car group, what's based in the North East with us as well. Fantastic. So it's North East Ford. Right, don't blame me. And Vectra Sport. And also we've got other things which might, which hopefully we've got in the pipeline for the day as well. Great. At night in question. Fabulous. So it would be more, more than well if yourself can turn up with the team as well again. Right. It would be absolutely brilliant. We will we'll do what we can. I can't promise because I'm not sure what we're doing quite yet on Sunday the 8th. I know I'll be 
I'll be broadcasting, obviously, but uh, yeah. beyond that, I'm not sure. But I will try because it's doable. It's 5.30 at Dalton Park on Sunday the 8th of December. And if you want to go up and take some toys, uh, all they'll do is they open their boots and they're loaded full of toys for the bands. Worst case scenario, we'll get you and some of the guys from Vectra and Ford to come into the studio. That's no problem And, and we, we'll do, uh, do that worst case scenario. But how did you get the Northeast Ford guys as well then? Well, funny enough, I, I was a little bit sick of the Vectra. I would just fancy the change of car, so then I bought myself a Ford Mondo ST. Right, OK. And, and then I found the Ford, Ford group, and then I joined these lads. And basically, I'm a, a part of both groups, and and I had a word with the admin on their page, Claire and, right. and Simon Shipby. Uh-huh. Also, on the Vectra side, you've got like Davy Coulson and myself, Mark, uh-huh. and Davy Bell. You've got quite a few of them anyway. Yeah. And we all just thought, we're going to bring everybody together. It's for the kids. Great. Presents. Absolutely. Let all these kids have a great Christmas. No, That's absolutely. what it's all about. Fantastic. Oh, it sounds... Sounds absolutely spectacular. So Dalton Park, and I know this is a long way in advance, but if you if you go shopping on Sundays, and a lot of people do these days because you can avoid a lot of the, the panic and the, the rush. That, well, we will have, hopefully, we will have, obviously, the Vectras. Yeah. We'll have Mark 1 Escorts, Mark 2 Escorts, Mark 3 Escorts. Wow. Mondios, Cortinas. Uh-huh. Basically, any of the Fords will turn up, probably the trucks as well. Incredible. It is incredible. Hey, well, thank you very much for doing that. So Dalton Park, 5.30, Sunday the 8th of December. We'll mention it before then again. If you want to check out all of those cars from Vectrosport, and yes, it'll be cool, just put a big coat on, and if you're going to Dalton Park to shop, just pop out. They're going to be in the car park. And a cup of Bovril. <laughs> cup of Bovril is, is a good, good shout, I have to say. I was just stunned at how many people you got there and also just everybody was uh, doing it for all the right reasons you know yeah i mean great. we're a great group we're not like the yobos who are going to the car parks with all like how can i say it and be idiots with the cars and wheels spinning the handbrake turns and uh, that's not needed right it's not needed whatsoever Sure. We are a great group, and we just get on with one another, which is absolutely fantastic. But also, I know a lot of people that, uh, you know, when you put a car shoe on and you get t- two dozen classic Ford cars, you get people yeah. travelling from one end of the, the region to the to the next. You can go to Dalton Park and see all of this just laid out for you and talk to all the drivers as well. Exactly, and some of the cars, hopefully, we'll be getting them decorated with the lights on, the tinsel, ah, sure. yeah. and just... Be part of Christmas, basically. Nah, be brilliant. Help the kids. Absolutely brilliant. Thanks for all you do, Craig. Thank you oh, for coming no, on. Anytime, no bother. Anytime, Alan. Bless you. Thanks, man. Take it Thanks, easy. Bye bye. Bye bye. There you are, Craig, doing something wonderful for cash rates. Northeast Ford and Vectra Sport. And if you've ever liked those Ford cars, that's a deal not to be missed. 5 30 p.m., Sunday, the 8th of December. And uh, quick break. And then I think we're going to deliver. Uh, Matthew from Newcastle, I think, is coming on. Let's get him on the show next. Night Owls with Alan Robson. You never know who's going to call next. Greatest Hits Radio. How about that? Now, we uh, promised you Matthew, and here is the man himself. Hello, Matthew. Hello, Alan. You all right, mate? Yes, I'm good. What you been up to, then? Well, I went with Ian down the beach on Friday. Oh, which beach? I went just to a beach, I think Bly Beach I went to, but right, I just, uh-huh. had, a good, had a good time with it. Good. It was muddy, so we just stayed in the car listening to music. <laughs> right. Um, but it, there's uh, something about sitting there just watching the waves crash in. I love that. I think that's great. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's always nice to watch the waves going past, even the B&B's crackers. <laughs> yeah. And you've been watching plebs? I'll be watching plebs. It's on tomorrow night. I'll be watching that. Doc Martin again on Wednesday. I'll be coming back on you on Sunday. Lovely. And on Friday, the big Call of Duty's lunch, and on Friday, that'll be good. Are you going I'll... straight out to get it? Yeah, I'm going to go out with Ian and going, going to go and get the game. It'll be so I look forward to it. I don't think Ian likes computer games very much. I I does he, he doesn't have to, though. He's just going to help you get there so you can pick one up and play it and have some fun. Yeah, that's how it goes, isn't it? So what, what what sets this Call of Duty different to any of the other ones? Because, you know, we've had Black Ops and we've had uh, a whole well, host of different ones. What's this one? one? What's it called? This one, this 
one's a follow-up to Black Ops 4. It's, 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 it's like it's set in a different universe, but you're a soldier, but you're going to have special ops, and instead of zombies, you're going to have special ops and survival mode, well, it's called, you know what I mean? Oh, so you're killing that, the alien things instead, are you? Is that, is that yeah, right? aliens. They had aliens in Call of Duty Ghost. It was pretty good, you know what I mean? I loved oh, the aliens yeah, in that. Good. The aliens was pretty good. I don't think Ian liked the aliens very much. I don't think he's a gamer like me. No. <laughs> oh, that doesn't matter. Just you keep playing and get better and better and better. I That's probably just... will. I'll probably play it for the full day on Friday. <laughs> so you, I got no doubt at all. You'll get, get up to a good standard with it. Brilliant. Yep. And, um, yep, I'm watching the soaps on the telly as well, watching them. I'm not going to mention too much. Right. So I've had a good... I'm out. I'm I'm out on Friday and then I'm back on the Wednesday with you in the following week and I'll be coming here again. Three more things. You yeah. know when you said we're going to get a Brexit deal, I don't think we're going to leave the EU. We're probably going to end up the same way we did when Chris Emmy was Prime Minister, by the way. You, know you, think, I mean? you think so? You, you don't think you'll get it through the House? I don't think I don't think you'll get it through at all. I think what will happen, you'll see the MPs will vote, they'll vote against him and then everybody will be upset again. Then we'll have another <laughs> election the week before that and then the week after... And then when December comes, we'll always, we'll always have an issue. <laughs> I think in this country, we should have um, freedom of speech to say what we like. And if somebody murders somebody or kills mm -hmm. them with their car, they should go to prison, I think. It's not fair, right? Right. No, I, I hear what you say. There's still talks on going about that whole thing, isn't there? Yeah, it just... I was talking to Ian about it in the car the other day, and he thinks that she didn't do it. And I said, Ian, I said, well, maybe she did do it. We don't know. We weren't there, you know what no, I mean? It's just... Um, yeah, we'll it's see. Just a, it's just annoying. It's just annoying that this woman's got away with it. It annoys me really that she's got away with it. Well, so <laughs> so far, I think that there will have to be something down the line to to bring this yeah. to an end because the family won't let it drop. Um, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, I wouldn't let it drop either. I think I think between me and you, if the woman has done something wrong, I think she should pay the price. You can't yeah. take somebody somebody's life and then them. Um, Back to get away with it and go to a country, I don't think it's right. I think mm. in our country, if somebody did that in our country, we need to be strong. We need to try and make sure they pay for it. But they don't pay for it, do they? They think they could just wander away. But, you know, it's just it's just annoying me that the police haven't arrested her. So it's upset me a little bit that that lad's lost his life and the woman's got away with it. I think, I think the family did go and see Donald Trump and they did, they did, he did offer to, 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 to get the woman to apologise, but yeah. they didn't take it. It's their, it's their choice, isn't it? Three yeah. more things. Um, did you, <laughs> did you had a good weekend? What you been up to? What you been um, up to? I've been been working, trying to get a little bit more work yeah. here and there. So yeah, yeah. we we'll keep we we'll keep pushing as long as we can. That's the thing. I think we should get days. I think we should get more days. It's fair if the radio stations agree to host night at uh, the. To put nitros in there, it should give them more days, please. Yeah, it would be nice. It would be nice. Just takes a little bit of time. Yep. And if, you, if you've got a, like, yep. a new boss, it takes a while to yep. get uh, your feet under yep. the table. That's all. Right. Anything else? Three more things. Um, <laughs> I've been playing the Saints Row games this week. Right. Like the gangster games. I've been enjoying them as oh, well. Oh, good, good. They're pretty good games. You know what I mean? You play as a gangster and you work with your crew and that, and your crew helps you out. Right. And your crew, and if you're in. And then the first mission, you've got to fight the person. Then, and then when you win, you when you win, you unlock you unlock a church to be a place where you live. You know what I mean? Right. Like a church. Okay. Yep. I think the new Call of Duty, it where they designed it, it's the way the download is going to be 110 gigabytes. I think of storage. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll do some shout out. A shout out to Mary and Jimmy. Shout out to Neil and Helen and Mary and Jimmy. Shout out to Jean from Redditon. A shout out to um, Deborah and John and Ryan and May Stewie. What can I go and ask, Helen? Well, you're in the hat Thank for you. a t shirt, so fingers crossed. Okay. Th Thank you three very much. Things, three more things. Um, Alan, you know, if you, you know, you know, if you wanted to rebuild from England, what would you do if you could rebuild it? You know, if you wanted it your way, by the way. No, I wouldn't change much of it because it's good the way it yeah. is, though, isn't it? You got the yep. zoo there, and you got all the rides, so yep. I'd, I'd leave it alone, yep. probably. Let let them. I'll, let them I'll build a night owls, a night owls driving school where you could drive around as night owls in the car. That would be good. That'd be great. Um. Um, are you getting the new Call of Duty game, Alan? Are you not getting it? Uh, I don't know. I'll see what you think of it first. When I 
come on next Sunday? Can I come on and talk about the yeah, experience of the game? Do I'll a review. I'll shout out to about two more things and I'll, and I'll go. Shout out to Ian. See you Friday, Ian, if you're listening. Okay. I'm on the radio right now if you put your wireless on. Um, two more things. Do you know um, Do you know what program I'd like to be banned? Would be Family Guy because it's, it's, um, it's a bit... Um, too it's rude, not really is it? funny. It's um, American Dad. American Dad shouldn't be banned. Yeah, the guy who... The guy who did the voice of American Dad is the same guy who did the voice of Family Guy. Yeah. I think um I think um when the Simpsons they did an episode once where um where um where um Homer's where the Family Guy cast coming out just took a mid charge. I don't want my phone gun indeed, because you know what I'm like with guns indeed, I get yeah. upset. So um I was watching an episode of Family Guy once and and um Peter Griffin and his family and Brian Griffin and um Lois Griffin and um Meg Griffin came in it. And Stewie Griffin came in Simpsons and Peter Griffin was saying saying, Oh, I remember the Simpsons. They're the people who 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 stole that idea of if beer or whatever you call it, you know what I mean? Beer. Right, yeah. But you, yeah. Know, Duff but beer. you know the creators the creators who who does who um designed Simpsons, the man who wrote Simpsons wrote a program called Futurama, I think, That's you know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. um I think if next time they bring a Call of Duty out, they should really give you a chance, you know, to give the game away free. Give you more, like, they're not going to give you a season pass this year, I don't think, but I'm okay with the game. But, you know, the game doesn't come out until um, midnight, you know what I mean, Alan, by the way? Uh, no, and that's why everybody has to queue. Got to move on, Matthew, but thank I'll you for calling. put it on YouTube, please. We'll put it on YouTube. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye, man, bye-bye. This, uh, <laughs> one, just, just one more thing. Um, it's our Matthew there. We look after him and we love him. And he's going to have an absolute ball with a new Call of Duty. No question. Now, got to give you three clues now. We're looking for an album. Each answer is a song from the album. The first clue is this. A blackbird is one. So is a thrush. And so is a nightingale. What do they have in common? Second clue. Before toilets had handles or buttons, you used to have to pull what? Okay. Before toilets had handles or buttons, you used to have to pull what? Third clue, nightmares are when you have bad ones. Okay. Nightmares are when you have bad ones. Now, you may know the answer already. We're looking for an album that features those three tracks. you got to get the fourth track first. That's going to come up in the next 15 to 20 minutes. We mentioned the clue. Uh, before toilets, you had handles and buttons. Uh, well, you know what we're like with the, all things to do with toilets. Oh, which got me thinking. How can I entertain the socks off you with such a thing? Well, you can hear... Who died on the toilet after this? Been talking about some of those temptations. That was super tramp, incidentally. Great tune. And uh, talking about temptations, Mark says, every week it's a thing where I have to have a Parmore once a week. Not including the one I have at the end of a night after a night out because she can't remember having that the next day. <laughs> now, I absolutely understand that. Also, Chris, my weakness is a Dixon's Pork Shop Savoy dip with all the trimmings. Has to be Dixon's, though, because they leave the Savoy as a sausage. They don't mash it up. No, I agree with that. I literally can't walk past one. Even if I'm not hungry, I will get a Savoy, says Chris the Truck from Wiles End. James from Alice Ford is with us, too. He's got uh, one of them things. Hi, James. Hi, Alan, mate. Hiya. I, I on about something you just you cannot resist. We after a few berries, I just cannot resist the old kebab. <laughs> so do you, do you do the full lot, the the, the whole garlic sauce thing? Or? Oh, oh, I love chilli sauce, and that's another thing. <laughs> uh, I love the chilli sauce, you know, but, <laughs> like, um, as, a, as one in particular, I never got back to it. Because when I had the chilli sauce, it, nah, I tell you, it burnt me inside out. Oh, <laughs> and that's after a few berries. <laughs> and in the morning, I woke up and I went to the toilet for number two, and it just burnt me ring. And I'm going, oh, no. And it, it, it happened for about a day and a half hour, and I'm going, oh, no. 
so I never, because you're about toilet thing, right? Yeah. So I never went to the toilet for a day and a half, and I ended up getting compensated compensate things, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I, I went to this shop, in my local shop, you know, after the bit shopping. Yeah. And I said, hey, got it for, for compensate, uh, compensate thingy, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And this, she says, oh, yeah. Um, but it's there. Yeah, is that the best word? I. It's like liquid foam. Mm-hmm. And I was away out of that then because I was, I tell you, yeah. I was fighting to get out of the toilet. Yeah. Because because when I went the first, I had to get in the shower, you know, because it was that burning. Like. <laughs> 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 Might anyway, have been hot going in, but it was hot like coming out, oh, right? Oh, hi. And, but I had done a daft thing. I opened the the bottle up and I was waiting on a bus and I just took a few oh, drags of it oh. and I, 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 I put it back in the pocket, like, you know. Right. And I was sitting on the bus and I hold my tummy rumbling. <laughs> <laughs> it was going nuts, you know what I mean? Oh. And I was thinking, oh, no. And I, I just got in the back door, run through the back door, up, and it went out like a, you know what I mean? Like, a, whoa, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so uh, you, you didn't actually get to the loo, you had to carry it up. Aye. Oh. Yeah. I mean, we've all done that walk, so let's let's not kid ourselves. We've oh, all done that Alan, walk. Alan, that walk. And I looked at the bottle, and it says, take a teaspoonful of... <laughs> 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 well, blo- blockage was clear. There's no question about oh, that. Oh, blockage was clear. So all right, aye. Oh, dear. Oh, aye. <laughs> well, aye. Well, then, Alan. No yeah. worries, but great to hear from you, James. Thanks for well, coming aye. on, man. Yeah, man. Take it easy. Bye bye. Yes, There's James, and it's Ford. Uh, so tell us, I'm going to give you uh, the fourth clue because we're just about there for the competition tonight. You've got to tell me the name of the album and what's the name of the, the artiste whose album it is. The first clue, and each answer is a song title. The first clue, a blackbird is one, so is a thrush and a nightingale. Second clue, before toilets had handles or buttons, you used to have to pull what? Third clue. Nightmares are when you have bad ones. Nightmares are when you have bad ones. And the fourth clue. If you're driving, what you don't do at a green light. Okay? If you're driving, what you don't do at a green light. You've now got four song titles. What's the name of the album? And whose album was it? Ring Nicola right now on 0191 488 3188. Right, she knows the answer. Let's see how many of you do too. 0191 488 3188. Got some George Benson for you soon too. Plus him telling you about how he got shot. And there's a tale to be told. However, Pete from the Grand City of Durham is up next. Hello, Peter. Hello, Alan. How are you, buddy? I'm all right, man. What you got for me? I was, um, my partner um, got cancer. Oh, I'm so, le- le- sorry. leukemia. Right. She's come out of hospital with an operation on the back of her spine. Right. It just spread to her spine. We went shopping on Saturday, me and my partner, in Durham. Yeah. Why do people feel the need to stare at people who are losing their hair? I just can't get it. I just, I just don't get it. Yeah. You know? It, 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 angry, it makes me angry. It really does. Do you know, uh, to, to me, if I see somebody, and, and sometimes you do, you'll see somebody in a supermarket, and it's obvious that they're going through something, and they, you know, and what they're going through, I'm sure, isn't pleasant. To me, I always see that as, as a mark of courage. I, I don't see it as a, oh, look, look at, you know, that is a negative and I don't know why anybody else would too, because it's in everybody's life these days. That damn thing. She's been going through her. She's had, it's just what she's got, Alan. It's, it's incurable. They like, won't cure it. Right. Um, so she's got it for the rest of her life. Can she? Can she keep it under wraps so she can survive it or not? Oh yeah, yeah. She, she keeps it under wraps. She's on tablets every day. Right. Um, about I think it's about sixteen tablets a day. She's got oh, a day. Blame me. That was bad. Um, it, it is what it is, Alan. Yeah. She's a fighter. She's she's. she's She's learned to grow with it, you know. She's, mm. she's a fighter. She's a, she's a warrior. Will the hair? Will the hair ever come back? Oh, she, she, it'll come back. It will right. come back. Right. It, it will come back. I mean, it's just, but at the end of the day, I just, I just can't understand why people stare at her. That's that one, Alan. How do how do you deal with it, though? I mean, how do how does she deal with it? Does she say something to them? Do you say something to them, or do you just walk back by and think, 
They go, what, what do they expect? Because, yes, she could wear a hat. Yes, she could put a wig on and all that kind of stuff. Why should you have to? At the end of the day, Alan, she's it, Karen, uh, my partner's Karen, Karen. Yeah. She will, she will just get on with it. Sure. It's, it's part and parcel, in, in her eyes, it's part and parcel of life. She sounds, she's br- she she sounds like she's dealing with it exactly the right way, mind. Oh, absolutely. I've, I've, we've been through it. We've had old moments. Well, I've needed, well, I've, I've, I've needed uh, hurt myself in, in other ways and what have you. Mm. But we've, we've we've grew stronger together yeah, as a couple over the last four over the last four years. Good. Good. Is it, can I speak about Jonathan Woodgate? I'm a massive Borough fan. Yeah, of course you can. What's the crack? Because when he first came in, like any fan of of the Northern clubs, I was thinking this might be just the boost they need because he knows the club, he knows the fans especially. He knows the people. He felt like he could be the right man for the job. Where do you stand on it then? I stand with. Uh, I love Jonathan as a. I love Jonathan as a man. Um, I, I, I loved him as a player. Mm-hmm. But this job for me, but all the, I've spoken to a lot of people. This job is way too big for him. Yeah, He's been so. through it at the deep end, mm-hmm. um, without no money, and it, it, it's a massive job. Yeah. So Everyone's saying we need, we need an experienced manager. Mm-hmm. We had an experience with Tony Pulis. The yes. hound came out. He left. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. We just can't be... But if, every football fan is fickle. You know, the thing, if results aren't going their way, mm. they will turn on a manager as soon as they have to. No, but, but if you think you know? about it, yes, we're, we're kind of... Because I always see halfway through the season's about Christmas, isn't it? It's kind of... It's kind of like November into December is... Halfway through the season proper, he hasn't had half a season. Uh, would he have enough? Because I remember when Lampard started at Chelsea, he lost, he lost, he lost, he drew, he lost. Uh, is it not just a question of getting your team to start to believe in you? Do you not think he can pull it round? I've got every faith in Jonathan. I have got every faith in him. But as I said to you, Alan, this job's too big for him. Right. I, I said, to, said, I've said to a lot of fans, to a lot of friends of mine, who are Middlesbrough fans, mm. give it till Christmas, let's see where we are. Yeah. If we are in the bottom three, then we've got Mr Gibson the last draft. Right. If he doesn't act, then we, we could find ourselves in League One, which is which is not good. But me being, a, and a lot of my friends, me being a Middlesbrough fan, I'll still support my club whatever league they're in. Sure, no, of course, that's a, that's a given. You see, the thing that I... That I really didn't want to happen and to me if a player wants to leave a club you've got to let them go because there's nothing worse than keeping somebody who doesn't want to be there but Triori I thought could have been the, peop- the one of the people that carried Middlesbrough to the top three in that division I genuinely believe that with the lightning speed that he has, he's just starting to properly make his way at Wolves now. It's took him a while. But I just thought if you put the right couple of people up there next to him, it doesn't matter how many they let in, they're going to score more because they've they've got what nobody in the championship seems to have, which is real pace. No, but but no. they let him go and, and did they get anybody in to replace him that, that's all that? No. To be honest with you, Alan, over the years of, being, of watching Middlesbrough, we've let players go, <sighs> um, the big play, big name players go. Yeah. We never replaced them. Gaston Ramirez, we never replaced him. No. Traore, as you said, we never replaced him. Um, and you must look down the road at Leeds and see Bamford and think... Yeah, Bamford, another one. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I know, you know what I'm saying, but it is what it is, Alan. Um, but I so, always thought, I mean, everybody loves Steve Gibson. I've got plenty of time for the man. He, you know, he did it his way. Yes, he's not a multi, 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 multi millionaire, but he loves the club and he's doing the best that he can. I thought Pulis was a good shout when it happened, and then it became a bad shout as Jonathan, soon as yeah. the. Soon under, as, under Tony, under Tony. We, we were, we were, I think we were in the top six the best part of all season mm-hmm. and uh, I think it was back, towards the back end we dropped out Yeah, and we we played ugly but we got results under yeah. Tony yeah. and that's why I couldn't understand why Steve let him go you know I, I, I couldn't I just couldn't understand why Steve parted ways with him because I think if we'd have stayed another season under Tony I think we may, we, we may be mm. challenging, for, challenging for promotion no, back to the I, Premier League I kind, but, of, I kind of feel that too uh, it's just that I know Steve Gibson likes flowing football and he loved the, you know, get the ball up to Ravinelli. 
yeah, get yeah. get Janine you on the ball, yeah, and yeah. he loved all of that, and every Middlesbrough fan did. Yeah. I'm yeah. old enough to go back to John Hickton and Willie Wingham oh, in the goal. Yeah. You know, if you can, yeah. if you go back to ancient history. But the one thing that Middlesbrough always had was somebody that could stick a ball in the net. Yeah. And I just, I cannot see it at the minute. I really just... We just haven't got anybody. Um, Some belonging. He can hold the ball well. But when he gets in the final third, he's clueless. He's absolutely clueless. It's potluck, um, isn't it? He'll either score a wonder goal from 30 yards or, yeah. he, or he'll, the ball will hit his buttocks and go behind the goal, you know? <laughs> uh, but it is he's that kind of player and I, I thought that he was going to be a breakthrough player and I think probably the management did too because we'd heard so much about him from uh, Nottingham and I think that was one of the better deals they did to get shot frankly and I, I, when I see him scoring I think you can't have somebody that's that inconsistent and if, yeah. you, if you look at the players like Ings, for example, you know, yeah. the, the, Ings, there's some really good strikers. Shane Long is another one that I've got plenty of time for. The the one thing they have in common is their team might lose, but they're going to score. Aye, absolutely. And we that's what to, Middlesbrough need more than anything at the moment. We just have to wait and see now what, what January really brings, what Mr. Gibson gives Jonathan absolutely. to um, see, if he, see if he can strengthen the squad to, to, get, to keep us in, in the championship or whatever. Because I, I want to... We'll probably finish mid table if we can. Mm. But uh, promotion's gone out the window. We we won't be, be promoted this season. Yeah. But I'm yeah. hoping we just knuckle down and they don't make a harsh a harsh decision um in the next couple of weeks if Jonathan does we, we do struggle and the um, the the second to be honest with you, you know. But you've got to look around and say, well, who's likely to come in and replace them? And Sunderland had a hell of a job finding them in the division next down. Uh who's free that's that's any good? Uh, well, anyone really? You know what I mean? Alan? Could be anybody, anybody. Uh, you know, but it is what it is. Alan. We just have to. Shouldn't be pot luck though. Not for a club as great as Middlesbrough. That's the thing. You know, it should. It, it should be people fighting for it. Not. Well, who can we get? Uh, hey, but anyway, wish you well, Pete. All the best, mate, and love to the missus. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. And uh, love this, Stuart, the Mad Monk from Newton Aycliffe's just sent the thing in saying. I'm great. I found you on digital radio. I'm heading south through France to the Mont Blanc Tunnel and on to Milan. Your, your show makes it more pleasurable. Cheers, Alan, from Stewie the Mad Monk of New Naycliffe. Good to have you with us. Going to play a piece of music after we take a quick break. 